why and how can you edit cohesively? In this video, I'm gonna break it down into a simple four-step process. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends, my name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. It's wonderful being here with y'all. Let's not waste time. Let's get straight into this. Starting with the what and why behind cohesive editing. Why do we want to actually edit cohesively? Well, first, I'm gonna go ahead and select out a set of images. Let's select out these images, and you'll notice that I'm gonna not select these two because those are edited with a different style. Let's talk about first the what is cohesive editing. If I select those images, press N, what you're gonna notice is that all of these images have been edited with the same colors, the same brightness, the same everything, right? This is cohesive editing. The entire purpose behind this is to make it look like each one of these images is part of the same story. Granted, this is all part of the same scene, but when we expand out to any type of story that we're telling, we would basically color grade everything to look like it came from the same sort of shoot, the same story. And you can immediately see a disconnect when they don't. So for example, if I select this image, this image, and let's choose this image, these are all three edited in a different style. So when it comes down to showing these in a final type of product, it's not gonna look like it matches, like it's cohesive. Well, let me show you the why in an actual kind of book layout, okay? Now, I never use the actual book module, except for now, we're gonna use the book module. So look, I'm gonna clear this, and what we'll do is just on a blank page of the book module, I'm gonna select a three photo layout, and the first thing I'm gonna do is grab these images and drop them in, and these are not cohesively edited, right? It's gonna feel as though there's a bit of a disconnect. When I put all three of these images in, each one of them has a little bit of a different look, a bit of a different vibe, and so we kind of feel like it's not necessarily the same story, or maybe these were shot at a different time. But as soon as I swap those out with images that were edited with the same style, right? Then it all starts to blend together and I can actually replace these and it's kind of seamless because each of these are edited with a similar style. So no matter what I drop in, it feels like it's part of the same story. This is the what and the why behind cohesive editing. And it's important. It's important if you want to actually tell stories. And I do imagine that each of you want to tell stories. Okay, let's get into the actual process of how to edit cohesively. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to the library module because I have all these images uh, loaded up as raw files right here. So let's select those raw files and I'm gonna deselect the, these ones actually. So let's go ahead and select these, remove these, and now we just have raw files. I've actually prepped a few of these for you guys. So if you'd like to follow along using those raw files, you totally can. But what I'm gonna do is select all of them, press Control Shift R or Command Shift R just to make sure everything is fully reset out you know, I'm not yanking your chain or whatnot. Okay, so step one in cohesive editing is to start with a singular look. And I would say step zero, by the way, if we were to go backwards a step, step zero would be to shoot manual mode. That way, all of the images are actually the exact same exposure and settings. So you'll notice if I bring up my settings, Everything is shot at 1 800 F2 ISO 50. This is the, the fundamental baseline of shooting cohesively is making sure that you know you shoot manual so that way your exposure settings aren't changing and what you're about to see in terms of editing is gonna get much, much easier. Okay, so step one then is to apply a look. This can be anything, okay? I'm gonna start because this isn't like a full on post-production tutorial. I'm just gonna begin with Visual Flow Pastel. I'm gonna choose soft light since our subjects are basically standing in soft light and I'll go ahead and just adjust the exposure. Now, you can choose any look you want here. You can dial in your own settings, you can choose one of your own presets, whatever you like, okay? So we're starting with Visual Flow Pastel. I'm gonna press W to get a read off the wall. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get my temperature where I like it. I'm gonna get my tint where I like it. And somewhere about here, I think it's pretty decent. Looks good. So this would be the before, or let's go ahead and reset so you can see this is the before, this is the after, right? With your look dialed in. 
you're going to go to step two, which is to synchronize your settings across the other images in that scene. So from the develop module, what you're going to do is select the first image, the one that has your look applied to it. Then you're going to select the last image in that scene, press control shift S or command shift S to bring up the sync dialogue. From here, I like to make this simple. Press check all, then deselect local adjustments, deselect, whoops, there we go. Deselect spot removal and crop because these are things that should be applied on an image to image basis, right? Your crop, your spot removal, any local things that you're doing, then press synchronize. Now it's gonna go ahead and jump through the entire set, applying all the color, exposure, contrast, every adjustment, except for those local adjustments. This brings us to step three. You're gonna now move image by image, and you're gonna make sure that from the develop module, as you move from one image to the next, sure, this is actually synchronized, but because we're zooming in, the exposure is a little bit different. So look, what we're gonna do from each image is I'm gonna make a couple corrections. We're gonna start with crop, make sure everything is good there. Then we go to the next image. I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust exposure because we zoomed in. The transmission of the lens or the light that's being let through is a little bit changed. I'm gonna fix my crop and then go to the next one. Do the same thing. Look at crop, look at exposure. That one looks good, go to the next one. Same thing, crop and exposure. If you like to, you can actually go down here to the, uh, so if you have a lot of lines in the shot, one of my favorite things to do is to jump down to transform and press auto. You can see it kind of corrects and straightens those lines really nicely. You can also build this into the synchronization if you want. So you can actually select all images, go ahead and make sure auto sync is turned on and then just press auto. It'll actually make the same adjustment for all images at that point. Okay, so going back to where we're at, I'm gonna make sure my, my crops are good, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one so it's a little bit more straightened out with those lines. I'm gonna to go to the next image. Okay, same thing. I wanna straighten out the lines. You usually wanna apply that auto adjustment, by the way, before you make your cropping adjustments because it will shift the lines a little bit on its own. Same thing here. Perfect. The exposure looks pretty good. I might brighten that one a little bit. Remember oftentimes on a zoom lens, even though your aperture is remaining constant, right? So the aperture is at F2 the entire time. You notice the brightness shifts because, well, that's what I mentioned earlier. It's called transmission. So even though your aperture is still the same, when you zoom, the transmission or the light that's coming through is affected a little bit. This is why in cinema lenses, there's actually a different, it, they go by T numbers instead of aperture numbers. Similar, but it's rated for transmission instead of aperture size. And I know I'm probably a little bit off on that explanation, please. Forgive me, it's late and I only know what I know. You know what I mean? I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. I don't, I don't know everything. I don't, I'm not even close to knowing everything. I just know what I need to know. The rest I learn as I go. Okay, here we go. Let's get to this one. Same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just fix the uh, kind of crop. Let's fix the line. And now again, I'm gonna brighten up. This time we shifted our angle a little bit. So I need to brighten up to his skin tone and even make a tiny bit of a white balance adjustment. What I'm also gonna do on this one is drop in a radial burn. Now this preset just puts a radial burn right in the center of the image with a negative 0.5 and I'm just gonna bring it over his face, maybe lighten it up a bit and call it good right about there, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing here. So what you're seeing is I'm actually, this is, this is how I edit. This is how I edit an entire set of images. I want you to see it from start to finish. So we're gonna keep going. Okay, this one looks good. I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to crop. Let's actually fix it from there. There we go, perfect. Almost there, reset crop, and go ahead and bring up our exposure. And now we're down to the final. Reset the crop again. I might have synchronized crop by accident. You know what'd be fun is like editing when I'm a little bit tipsy. That'd be kind of fun. Okay, last, 
once you've gone image by image and you've made sure that basically your brightness, your temperature, your contrast, everything is set, you're going to do a final check. So step four is you're going to select the images within that scene and you're going to do a survey review. So press N to bring up survey mode. And then you're going to press tab just to close down all the other tabs. You can press shift tab. It'll actually close down all the other palettes. So now you're just looking at that set. And what you should be seeing is the same kind of temperatures, the same brightness, the same white point and black point, the same colors across that set of images like we have here. When you've done this correctly, you have now cohesively edited an entire scene just as we have, and it's ready to go. It's ready to go in whatever format you like. Now, remember this entire process kind of hinges on your style and your style is going to be subjective. So that number one starting point with selecting a look can be really anything. But from there, you're going to dial in that look across the entire scene, across the entire deliverable. So that way the images, no matter where they go, whether it's social, whether it's blogging, whether it's albums or wall art, it all looks like it's part of the same story. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd love to see you comment below. I do actually read all of your comments. I don't get a chance to reply to them all, but I read to them and I do follow like, like if you guys have ideas and things that you want to learn about, I actually get a lot of my ideas from you all. We'd also love for you to like the video, subscribe to the channel because we have tons of content going up each day. If you want to be notified of it, turn on your notifications. And if you guys want to follow me and kind of hang out, you know, just Follow me at Pygersa on Instagram. That's it for me. I'm going to bed. Bye.